Hey guys, Poster here, and today we are going to take a look at some of the current large caps from a macro perspective. Whilst the market is still relatively choppy and unpredictable, I think it's always a good idea to keep a focus on the bigger picture and see how the price action on the higher time frames is looking. It's very easy to get lost in the noise whilst there are so many conflicting opinions being shared on platforms such as Twitter. So hopefully this video pulls you out of that chaos and resets your mind to see what the situation really is right now. Today we will be solely looking at the weekly chart of coins such as Ethereum, BNB, Litecoin, Chainlink and XRP. I decided to leave Bitcoin out of this video as nothing has changed since the last Bitcoin video and I'll leave a link in the description to that. But these are five of the biggest coins out there right now that will hopefully shed some light on where the market generally is at this moment. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting with Ethereum and if we actually zoom out we can see that although yet yeah, the last few weeks has been pretty rough we can see that we're still well above the previous all time highs from the last run so unless you bought the top, join crypto pretty late or are just greedy things aren't looking too bad when you actually put things into perspective and if we actually look at the more recent price action now on the weekly time frame we can see that we're holding this level of support at around $1,900 to $1,700. And if we see a weekly close below this kind of area, then it's definitely not going to look good, at least for the short to mid term. So the kind of scenarios that I'm looking for from a bearish perspective is if we had to lose this level here, like I said, at this, at this area, then we could drop below, retest that, see a weekly wick into this level before heading lower. And the next level of interest for me there is around $1,300. And the reason for that is just where we've seen uh, previous levels of support and resistance at the area. So that's kind of the bearish scenario for me. On the flip side, if this level does hold and we actually start to build up some momentum, it'd be great you know, if we've seen us head back towards that $2,300 uh, level. But that isn't enough because that could be just continued chopping, uh, continued chopping, continued ranging for a little while before we see uh, an actual outcome and some direction reappear. So the best case scenario there would be for something like that where we actually flip the most recent high into support again and then we can continue maybe back towards that 2728 kind of area. So that would be the bullish scenario whilst we're actually within these two levels here at 17 and uh, 23. There is no real bias in terms of where we may head next. We could range between these levels for a little longer before we see an outcome. But yeah, it's either the break above and then we continue with some better looking bullish market structure or this trend continues where we've seen uh, a series of lower highs and that that uh, trend could continue and push us down towards 1.3. Moving on to BNB now, and this is actually a very different looking chart to what we've just seen with Ethereum. And the reason for this is just because at the back end of last year, price was around that 15 to $20 area, and then it just went absolutely crazy, completely parabolic, running almost to $700, where the peak was in May. So since then, obviously, we've seen the drop. Uh, BNB didn't escape the whole market crash. And now what we're actually looking at is how these uh, the lows of the crash here and then the swing high after that are two key levels for us. And the reason for this is because we've seen this level interacted with before. This is where we're capped now. And that's kind of the range high where we've got the range low from the drop. So again, in terms of direction and where we head next, it's about that breakout in either direction, whether it be bullish or bearish. Of course, the thing is at the moment that is if we do actually see a weekly close and lo lose this level at around $200, you know something like that depending on of course how the rest of the market is i don't expect bnb to do this solely unless the rest of the market continues to crash but what i'd be looking for now is where the next level of interest is and because of the parabolic run when we zoom out and look at these higher time frames there isn't much going on between the price range of between like 40 to 50 dollars all the way up to 200 so it would be a pretty hefty drop in my opinion where there is no uh, key levels of um, solid support and then we may head all the way back down to that yearly open at around $40, $50 and of course a lot has to happen for that to play out but that would be a very favourable um, swing trade from a risk reward perspective 
if I was to get the opportunity to take that short setup. But yeah, like I said, a lot has to happen there from that bearish scenario. And then on the flip side, it's very difficult to get bullish until we see a flip of them highs that we mentioned, them range highs back into support and see some uh, bullish looking uh, market structure again with higher highs and higher lows. So yeah, whilst BNB is in the middle of that range at the moment, it's very difficult to get a sense of where it's going to head next. I'm sure the rest of the market conditions will have a huge impact on BNB, but for now it's a neutral view waiting for a macro play to appear. I just want to take a quick minute to give a shout out to PrimeXBT for sponsoring this video. Prime is an award-winning multi-currency trading platform which allows users to trade a handful of crypto assets such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and Ripple, but also offers traders access to traditional markets such as Forex, Metals and Oil. You can trade all of these markets whilst using Bitcoin, USDT or USDC as a base currency. The platform has a super clean and customizable UI as well as built-in charting software to truly make it an all-in-one trading experience. Prime also covers the expected stuff such as low fees, a variety of order types and is one of the most recognizable trading platforms in the space. If you want to support myself and my content please check Prime out and sign up using the link in the description and if you use the promo code POSTEXBT you'll also get a 50% deposit bonus on any deposits up to half a Bitcoin. Now let's get back to the video. Zooming out on the Litecoin chart now and you know things don't look great when you actually see this blow off top and the complete crash following that. Now we can actually see when we zoom in that price similar to BNB is in that range of where we have seen highs and lows after the drop. But the one thing that I'm really paying close attention to and the key difference to BNB is how Litecoin is already at that yearly open. So the yearly open is actually acting as a level of support for Litecoin at the moment. And it's about how Litecoin can actually get away from this now and start to build up some momentum if it wants to look a little bit better and get towards them range highs again. And the difficulty here is the rest of the market now, of course. If uh, Bitcoin was to drop a little bit lower, but actually hold that respected 30k level of support, it could be that that causes BNB to, uh, uh, sorry, Litecoin to drop below that level, and then it could actually cause a fake out if Bitcoin was to bounce then at the range support back towards and range highs, it could look like a nasty fake out and then reclaiming the level and heading back towards and kind of following Bitcoin's trend as a lot of the altcoins do. So it's just one thing to bear in mind there not to get fakes not to rush the entries unless bitcoin also is looking fairly similar to its respected levels but again the the, the scenario remains the same we've got key levels of interest from a uh, bullish and bearish perspective if this level of support is lost and bitcoin also doesn't look great then it could be a play back down here to around 70 to 80 dollars however on the flip side if we do see a bounce on bitcoin great it may run back up towards these uh, levels that we see at around 180 dollars but again that's not the place to then get bullish even if you know things are a bit more euphoric however this is what we really want to see something like that where we reclaim that level it's back into support and then we can head back higher and take it from there in terms of taking it level by level. So whilst we're looking at linked, I definitely have extra interest in this chart because it is a coin that I want to build a long term position in dollar cost averaging over you know a long period of time for the future. And what we're actually going to see here from a purely technical perspective is how we have these 2020 highs here. We had a good run last summer and then this level was actually respected as support on the next leg up into price discovery. So we've seen that the level was tested as support. It was even the level of support here on the weekly close after the huge drop. The wick went much lower, but the close was above the 2020 highs and things weren't looking too bad. But then however, obviously recent price action not being too bullish has sent price back below there. We've seen weekly closes below this level and then it was retested as resistance with wicks above but no close and then here we are now at around $16. So in terms of what's next, it's very similar to everything else that we've looked at in terms of you've got the bullish scenario of getting back above that level and heading back towards $26, $28. Or, you know, on the bear, on the flip side, you could potentially lose this level here where we've seen the wick lows at around $14. And if we was to lose that, we may be looking at a bearish retest before heading back towards a yearly open, which has always been a, a key factor when marking out levels of interest. And the reason for this is because there is a confluence with this level where we've seen a level, it act as support before the huge run up. So we can see here, and I'll make it a little bit 
longer just to make things clear that'll do so we can actually see here that it was support for quite a while before the huge breakout and then that was what really triggered the rally to then go on so a full retrace to the yearly open would be a great opportunity to actually start buying from a long-term perspective but in terms of uh, trading it's definitely favorable to be shorting these retests here um, on the on these bearish retests bearish flips so scenarios again just waiting for that breakout in either direction and then we'll see what we get last but not least taking a look at xrp now and if you hadn't already figured it out we're going to be looking at the range lows after the drop and then the range highs which we've seen on the following bounce so they're the two levels of interest however with xrp it's quite interesting because we are on that level of support now and this is where we may see either the breakdown or a decent bounce back towards the range highs so it's definitely you know where we looked at b and b for example it was in the middle of the range and there wasn't really too much to pay close attention to right now xrp is slightly different where we're actually at that level of support similar to litecoin and we actually want to see what happens next because we're expecting some kind of reaction at this level of support and there is extra confluence with this level of support we can see that this is where the weekly closes uh, were capped on the run-up just before the huge breakout so we've seen that it was resistance for a couple of months actually before finally breaking out in april and it was a huge breakout once that level was breached so it's definitely a key level there and that's where we are right now again the scenarios remain the same potential bounce here to them range highs but the the real area of like bullish interest would be that flip there with some continuation so a lot has to happen there for us to get bullish but it could be that a shorting opportunity is presented to us soon based on a, a weekly close below retest and then heading towards 37 to 40 cents that kind of area so definitely one on my radar right now potential short opportunity but again keeping an eye on bitcoin and making sure that uh, there is some confluence there and i'm not rushing an entry so for me there are two really important factors when looking at these time frames number one we will still have to pay close attention to bitcoin like i said if one of these altcoins loses a level of support or potentially breaks a level of resistance but bitcoin hasn't done the same to its respected level it could become a nasty time high time frame fake out and number two is that when looking at things from the macro perspective targets in areas of interest may seem very unrealistic and very far away but the crypto market will always continue to surprise people i totally agree that some of these levels feel so far away but these are not levels that we expect to see tapped in the next week or two whether this is the start of a new bear market or some cooling off before the next leg up prices will enter a trending market again at some point and price is going to interact with these levels either much higher or much lower over the next year or two and that is exactly the time frames that we're looking at and expecting to see when analyzing the macro so that is it for this one hopefully this video helps those who need to refresh their views and pull away from the low time frame noise i know not everyone is a swing uh, a swing trader but i do believe for the most part that not everyone is cut out to be a low time frame day trader if you enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one